Hello and welcome to the video. This is the first video in a short series of just three videos. This one is all about RC control systems and it's going to talk about how you get the movement of a stick on the radio to make this do something else and to talk to the motors and make it flip and roll and do whatever you want. Now multi-rotors as part of the hobby have been around for a long time and lots of pilots get into multi-rotors by buying some kind of bind and fly or ready to fly vehicle where it comes ready to go you just bind it to your radio and you're off. But most of us then want to progress and we might either want to replace a faulty component or we might want to do a bit of troubleshooting, upgrade the video transmitter or you might be like me which is after your first quarter you go oh this is great I really want to build one. And these videos are coming around because a friend of mine, Andrew, regularly gets questions around control systems, power systems and FPV. Because hopefully if you understand that context, it'll help you uh, have a better understanding of how the model is actually working, which is going to be helpful if you need to troubleshoot or fix anything. And it's a very useful framework if you're going to build your own. So enough of me banging on, let's jump on to the first slide. I'm going to use graphics here and illustrate it with physical pieces like on this quad to show you exactly what I'm talking about. So hopefully by doing it that way, you'll be clear on what all the pieces are and how they all fit together. So here on the first slide, let's define the edges of the system that we're about to explore. On the very left hand side we have the radio and that's the radio that's going to be in our hands and those come in lots of shapes, sizes, prices, manufacturers but they all fundamentally do the same thing and that is they send the control positions via radio waves to your model and then your model does something with it. On the right hand side we have where we're going to end up and on a quadcopter that's going to be to the four motors that's one on each of the four arms. Now the first thing that we're going to talk about in the first step is going to be connecting up to the receiver. Now receivers in multi-rotors tend to be these very small style ones about the size of a fingernail typically with two antennas and they'll only have four or five outputs. Those outputs are going to be typically things like SBUS that plug into your flight controller and there may be an input to send telemetry back down to the radio but I'll get to that in a minute. The radio link between the radio itself and the receiver is typically going to be 2.4 gigahertz. However, with things like Crossfire, R9M and other long range systems in inverted commas, those are going to be running on 868 or 915 megahertz, a much lower frequency. But most standard radio control systems these days are going to be using 2.4. But because they are using 2.4 doesn't mean every receiver can talk to every radio. So for example, if you have an FR Sky radio like this Tyrannus, then that won't talk to Fly Sky receivers unless you have something like a 4-in-1 module in it. Similarly, if you have something like this Tango 2 from Team Black Sheep, which only talks Crossfire, which is one of those lower frequency, longer range, high performance systems, then you're going to need a Crossfire receiver. But typically the kind of things you're going to come across are things like ACCST, which is the language that Free Sky talks. And you can think of them like languages. So for example, you know, you can think of like ACCST is kind of like English. Access is another version of a Free Sky protocol is like French. Crossfire is like Spanish, etc, etc. And you have all these different versions for Fataba, Spectrum and everyone else. Unless the receiver and the radio are talking the same language, then you won't be able to bind them. And there's usually an explicit process that you go through to bind the receiver to the radio. And all that's doing is making sure that when the radio is powered and the receiver is powered, they can securely talk to each other and exchange information. The next part of the connection is how the receiver then passes that information into the flight controller, whatever that is in the heart of your multi-rotor. Now, by far the most common way to do it these days is using SBUS, and that's using a standard three pin connection. That's usually a black wire, a red wire, and typically a white or a yellow wire. And that's gonna connect onto the flight controller somewhere. There's usually a dedicated pin for SBUS in. 
Now the reason that SBUS is used very very commonly is it's a digital protocol which means it's nice and fast. It also means that it has error correction and additional information that comes along with all of the stick positions which is remember what we're sending from the radio back on the left hand side. It also has information about whether or not the frames have been lost and also information about whether the receiver is in a fail safe condition as well. Now in your flight controller software then you would set up SBUS as the receiver type and these days that's pretty much going to be your default. However there are other options available. Not all these options are available on all receiver types. So there's something called iBUS which is a version of SBUS that FlySky receivers can talk and iBUS is quite clever. It has a few additional tweaks over regular good old fashioned vanilla SBUS. F port is something that you can get, so is CRSF. CRSF is a protocol that the Crossfire systems talk. PPM and PWM are the old fashioned ways of connecting systems together. They're more analog style connections and analog doesn't work as well for signals because you don't have the same precision and avoidance of interference because these systems tend to be subjected to lots of electrical noise because we're throwing around huge amounts of power into these motors to make these quadcopters fly like we want them to. But typically you're going to have a receiver connected to your flight controller via three wires. Two of them are going to supply the receiver with power and the other one is going to be sending the signals to the flight controller. More often than not that's going to be SBUS. The flight controller then of course runs something like beta flight and beta flight is going to then listen to all of the control inputs for the throttle elevator aileron rudder, your mode switch, your arming switch or however you've got it set up and then make the quadcopter fly. Now how it does that is it's going to directly control each of those four individual motors by making them spin faster or slower to make the quadcopter either rotate or flip over in any axis that you want. Now the protocol or the language, if we want to use that same analogy again, that the flight controller is talking to the ESC is going to be one of a handful of things. Now typically these days the connection between the speed controller and the flight controller is only going to be two wires. Typically a black one is going to be the ground and there's usually a white one or a light coloured one which is going to be the signal. Now in the old days they used to use PWM, pulse width modulation, and that's an analogue way of talking to speed controllers and we very rarely use that in the hobby now. It's used in things like fixed wing aircraft but not anymore in multi-rotors. We've gone up to things called one shot and now D shot, which is the language that most multicopters are going to be talking these days, particularly on modern systems. And D shot is a digital signal, just like we talked about SBUS being a digital signal. D shot is another digital signal that tells the ESC exactly how much power the flight controller wants out of that particular motor. Now there are other versions and protocols that are around and you'll see there's different D-Shot speeds. D-Shot 150, D-Shot 300, D-Shot 600, D-Shot 1200 and each of those is, is a faster and faster way to talk to the ESC but the ESC again has to be capable of understanding that particular version or dialect of that language. Most common these days are going to be D-Shot 300 and 600 that you'll see on modern flight controllers. In the old days, the ESCs we were using for multi-rotors used to use PWM and have a three-wire connection back to the flight controller. That third wire that we don't get these days because in the modern speed controllers they don't provide this feature, that third red wire in the lead going back to the flight controller used to provide the five volts back to the flight controller to power it. But I'll talk a lot more about that in the next series which is all about how the power system works. Now of course there's not just one ESC and motor, there's actually four of these. So the flight controller is updating each of these ESCs many 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 times every second so that the motor is changing the amount of power and speed that it's turning so that the quadcopter will fly in the way that you want it to or the way you've asked it to from moving the stick on your radio. There's only one last part of control. You'll notice that in a lot of these cases the arrows are kind of bi-directional and for some of these things like the CRSF protocols, things like F port, 
um, and things like iBus, then the connection between the receiver and the flight controller is actually two-way. It's not just sending the controls from the radio to the flight controller. The flight controller can also send telemetry information via the receiver back down into the radio. And that telemetry on something like a FR Sky receiver is going to be called smart port. But if you're using CRSF, which is the protocol, remember, from TBS Crossfire, then TBS Crossfire connection is actually two wires, a transmit and a receive. So there is a wire there waiting and ready to send telemetry back down to your radio. And that telemetry can be used to monitor things like your battery, how much current, distance, height, speed, all that kind of goodness, and have it displayed on the radio. Potentially also set up warnings, so if you go too high or too far away, or your voltage is getting too low, the radio will let you know and you can come home safely with lots of battery left over. And that, in summary, is the control system that you're actually going to find on all modern multirotors. Everything is a variation on this, so for example if it was a hexcopter with six motors, there'd just be an extra two motors added onto this. You can also have telemetry coming back from the ESCs to the flight controller in a similar way that it goes from the flight controller back to the receiver, back to the radio, and that allows the flight controller to monitor things like how much current each ESC is running, uh, also things like ESC temperature and stuff. But I'm not going to cover it in here yet. But hopefully that's helpful and explains where some of the names that you've probably read in the forums or seen in other video series all fits in. Here on the Painless 360 channel, you will find lots of builds for beginners. If you have a look in the playlist, you will find quite a few RC builds aimed specifically at those of you with limited knowledge. And hopefully now by understanding that, as I'm talking about the control system, it will make a lot more sense. If you want to know more, then check out the links below and the next one will go through how the power system works on a multi-rotor. Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the inner circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject, starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.